I would sum up the string experience in one word, which is family. And the staff is family and the members are family. And that has made it a tradition that has existed now in High Point since 1957 for almost 60 years. March 2nd, 1957. In age of exploration, family, and Southern hospitality, the String and Splinter opens its doors in the basement of the Sheraton Hotel with these values in mind. My dad every day would go to lunch at the Sheraton Hotel. He and a bunch of his cronies would get together for lunch at that back table over there at the, at the hotel. And I think that's really the, where the idea for the String and Splinter Club got hatched. Uh, their vision was to have a men's club, a downtown men's club, uh, where friends and businessmen from all over the city could come and enjoy lunch together. Well, my first memory of the String and Splinter was in 1957 when it opened, and my father was a member. And it was a big happening. Um, this was something very important that had never been done in High Point before, and people were very excited about it. And um, by standards of other places in High Point, the String was very elegant. Um, it was really very, very uptown. It was small, uh, very intimate, um, and you knew every person that was in there. We would be invited as a family on Sundays to have lunch at the club. So uh, that was a real special thing for myself and my sister and my brother to be able to do that, because otherwise we never came because it was a men's club so that's one of my fond memories. My earliest memory of the String and Splinter Club was at the old Sheraton and it was the minor bird. Every child is fascinated by a big bird and we had one there. I heard his, his verbiage, <laughs> pretty strong verbiage sometimes. He was the parrot, uh, Danny Boy was the parrot that, that was so the mascot at the, at the uh, String and Splinter Club. He'd say, uh, my name's Danny Boy, what's yours? <laughs> <laughs> uh, some people were known to put a little, what was it, scotch or scotch in his water. And uh, uh, that was before I was drinking back then, so I don't know. But uh, yeah, he enjoyed scotch, I think, and water. Maybe a little ice cube, too. As the club grew, so did its needs. And in 1964, String and Splinter moved to the penthouse suite of the new Holiday Inn, where it would reside for over a decade. They called it the penthouse suite. It was on the top. And during that time, there weren't a lot of tall furniture buildings around. So you really felt like you were up and, you know, it, it made it special. It was new but it made it special. When I first learned about the String and Splinter Club here in High Point, I was a young practicing attorney back in 1983, and several of the members took me up to this hotel roof, and you had to walk through the back alley, you got into an elevator with mirrors, and then you go up to the top floor. And all I could think was, as the entrance going in, was this is a little seedy, and I felt a little strange riding up with a bunch of men to the top of a hotel, um, in High Point, North Carolina, in a mirrored elevator. So, but we get up there, and the doors open, and it was a lovely place. And what I remember best is the people, the staff people who, you know, welcomed you as you walked in. They were so inviting and so lovely, and all of the members were lovely as well. But change came again in 1983, when the club moved from the Holiday Inn to its current location in Market Square and brought sweeping changes with it. our first annual meeting in, the, I believe, in 1983 at the new club. One of the issues at that point was whether we would admit women, and if so, would we have any members? We had two women that wanted to become members, but we first needed to have it approved by the membership. I was very concerned that when we put it to a vote that it would be close. Well, it wasn't close at all. It was unanimous that we allow women to come in, and at that point, Bobby Martin and a friend of hers became the first two women members. 
it should have been done a long time ago because mm -hmm. the, the ladies have really made a, a wonderful addition and uh, I'm going to say improvement to the club. Barbara Gary had tons of personality as our manager and she was very well thought of and, and she, uh, uh, she has one of the nicest husbands in the business. Her husband Ivan Gary is such a nice person but she she uh, was actually working in Atlanta for, uh, for uh, uh, at the Atlanta market and met Ivan when he was working for the Atlanta market. And then when they got married and they moved up here, he, Ivan looked at the nice building, but she was a great addition to our club and gave us a, a special personality. Barbara Gay put this place on the map. She was an excellent manager and ran a tight ship and just did a great job in every respect. Barbara was so organized and so professional, and she kept us all online. As one of the first female members of the club, I was received very well. Mary Cheryl, I believe, was the first member, and I thought that the men here at the club were very welcoming, very open, very receptive to having women members. As it turns out, I was warmly received um, and I had um, gotten a, an opinion from my husband and he had said oh yes of course and uh, I also knew that Barbara Gary did all the work because she was the manager but I was concerned about the club table and their acceptance and to the person during my year as president they all came and told me they were glad I was president and that did make me feel good still does <laughs> Well, I was very flattered to be asked to be on the board, and then I started thinking about it a little bit of past history, and when I was first dating my husband, he asked me up to High Point during a furniture market, and his father was here, and he wanted us to meet. So I drove from Raleigh, because I was at Peace College, and I drove up here to have dinner with them. And I had the address, and it was the old Holiday Inn. And that's how you know, I arrived, and I wanted to come in, and they said, well, excuse me, this is a men's, gentleman's club, and you are not allowed, you're not a member. And I said, oh, I realize that, but I have a date, and my date's inside. And, and they said, well, please, step away and wait and we will go and find him and let him know that you're here. So, that's, I never experienced anything like that. I'm from Eastern North Carolina, never heard of a men's only club. And so I was, I was shocked and embarrassed and miffed. And so he came out and he got me and uh, we had to go somewhere else We finished else our drink first though. Oh, you did. <laughs> yeah. All right. And so then, by being asked to be on the board, I said, well, I have a story to tell them when I, when I introduce myself, when I get in there on the first day. And I did. And I, I um, was thrilled to say what had happened. And then, not too long after that, we were having our group shot in the entry of the string and splinter. And so we were seated on the sofa, and um, Hello, my husband, over. my husband, okay, he'll take, take, take over from I'll here. And he wanted to come in. So we go past, <laughs> so let's say that was 45 years ago, where my date was not allowed into the club, and actually I did finish my glass of wine and mm -hmm. ran out and got her, but I had to leave. And my father said, what are we going to do? I said, we obviously can't stay here. We need to leave because it's my girlfriend. So here we go, 45 years later, I come walking in here for a late mm -hmm. lunch, and I come to walk in the entry, and the man came up and he stopped me. He put his hand up and he said, sir, could you just stand here? And I said, for what? And he said, well, the board of directors are having their film and their shot taken, and if you wouldn't mind just standing here and waiting, I said, I'd like to just walk around. He said, if you wouldn't mind, just stop. And his hand went up. And Rena was sitting on the sofa, and she turned around, and she went, <laughs> like, you're out there, I'm in here. Uh -huh. So what goes around comes around, which yes. is pretty. 
pretty fun. So, so, so all in all, everything was made right at the end. Well, there was an incident um, years ago when I was first a member, when after we had moved over here to the um, Market Street building, and I was having lunch one day with um, the president of the String and Splinter Club, who was a good friend of mine, and we walked in and he said, well, let's sit at the club table. And so we sat down, he was at the head and I was beside him on the left-hand side. There were several other gentlemen who were there and a few of them got up to leave and didn't think anything about it because I thought they were finished with their lunch and found out two weeks later as I'm walking down the sidewalk, Bill Phillips said, well, Chris, you caused a stir. And I said, what do you mean a stir? And he said, well, you sat at the club table. And I said, so I'm a member, what's the problem with that? Well, there's an unwritten rule that you can't sit at the club table if you're a female. And I said, well, if it's unwritten, neither I nor the president knew about it, and we sat at the club table. But after that, I decided that out of deference to the gentlemen in the club, because they were of an older generation and they quite weren't ready for women professionals, that I would not sit at the club table. However, Louise Schock later on decided, well, if the men could have their club table, then the women would have their club table at the other end of the String and Splinter Club. And so she decided they didn't need the men. They would have more fun at their table if they sat at the other end, and they did. And I came and did sit with them at the, their women's club table years later. The, the club table was always open, to, no matter who you were. Except for women. Uh, yeah, except for women. It yeah. wasn't always, but it is now. It is now. Thank goodness. We I don't know that. about yeah. that. They must, yeah. Wait a minute. How you mean you tell me we let women at the club yeah. table? Yes. Oh, I cannot yeah. believe that. I don't know if they feel welcome or not, but they are, you know, they're welcome. But they're, they may not feel it. God, no, we've uh, gone to hell really now. It's just, just going downhill fast, you know. <laughs> right. That's okay. A few of them will let them come in there as long as they behave themselves. Right. Yeah. I have some good jokes to tell, maybe. Right. While much has evolved, there are a few things that haven't changed. Fine dining, extraordinary service, and incomparable Southern hospitality. I would be remiss if I did not mention the staff, because I think the string has always been noted for the staff that we've had, our managers, to begin with, but our managers knew how to um, train staff. That has been wonderful, and that is something that I am very grateful for, and I think all of our members are. So the staff here, all of them are just wonderful. The chefs have been great. The, the food, like Tim said, we have guests that come into town, business guests or whatever. We bring them here to lunch, well, they come early. They always make appointments with us at 11 o'clock so that we will invite them to come eat at the string because they know how good it is here. The staff is, to me, is even though I don't know all the names over the years, they've just been wonderful. <laughs> just say, no one has, I can never remember a moment where we were disappointed about anything. I mean, the service is fabulous. and. Uh, it's just a warm, friendly place to come. The staff is top drawer. One time, I'm a storyteller. I yes. was here at night, and I left, and I realized that my phone was left. I came back here, the club was closed, and the police officer out in front, he says, what are we going to do? I said, we got to get in there, i got to get my phone. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be Rena's phone, and one of the wait staff actually got in her car and came back here to open the club up to get the, to get the mobile phone. And that is when, that's first class. Knowing that everybody here, the staff and everybody cares for you and we care for them, or we care for each other. Uh, and sometimes the lunch is almost like the, the uh, anticipation of who you're gonna, who you're gonna see today. One, uh, before I came here, a uh, close friend of ours, Jack Sling. And Jack's one of the guys, is, he's not around anymore, but I constantly, we have, when you come in the string here, it's called the, the Norcross Gathering Room, and it reminds me of Jack all the time. 
because Jack called me on the phone, and those that knew Jack Slane, he was very, he was a gentleman, and everything was all business. Jack Slane was all business, but a friend deep and deep. So he called me up one day, and the phone, I answered the phone, he said, Mark, it's Jack. I said, yes, I know that. He said, there is a campaign going on at the String and Splinter, and I'm on the committee. I said, okay. And he put down, he gave me the dollar amount that he wanted, and I said, well, Jack, now what is that for? He said, is that a yes or a no? And I went, that's a yes. He said, and hung up the phone. So every time I come in and, <laughs> and I see the name up there, I think of my good buddy, Jack Slane. Pat Patterson would be one that we would we need to remember. Mr. Pat, as he was affectionately known, had been with the String and Splinter at the old club for as long as I could remember. And he agreed to come over and be a maitre d' and be the transforming person as we moved from the being the old men's club to being the new city club that we became. Uh, my uncle Jack Rochelle, uh, he would come in and they've been always a part of this string and splinter, always a part of the furniture industry. Um, he would come in possibly in his hunting regalia with his whistles and maybe even his dog he might have with him and proceed to order a few people around, proceed to shake things up a little bit. And, and uh, I don't know that he ever got thrown out quite, but he, he sure shook it up a few times, I think, here at the club table. My husband was a very interesting gentleman. He loved people. He was outgoing. And um, I think he did well as president of the club. The club was located at that time uh, at the Holiday Inn. And so it was on the fourth floor of the Holiday Inn. And we went there, um, well, he went for lunch all the time, but we would also go for dinner. By that time, the club offered lunch and dinner, which wasn't true in the beginning. But um, it was a, a fun place to go, very welcoming. Um, and my husband, I think, welcomed everybody who came in. Well, my memories of Kerry are very fond. He was a, he was six years older than I am, and uh, he was a great brother. He was a great husband and a great father and a great grandfather, and he was just a good man all the way around. And I loved him very much, and we had a, a he and Elner and Wanda and myself had a very close relationship all during the years. Uh, my father, Kerry Elderton Sr., um, what I remember is how much the staff here at the String and Splinter cared about him and took care of him. And I think it's because he treated them with respect, uh, which he taught us throughout our life to treat everybody <coughs> with respect, you know, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, and the people here at the string, the, the help, the, the service has always been so kind and good to us. And I believe it's a, a little bit of re the reflection of from what Dad, you know, taught us and how he treated everybody also here at the string. We had an empty space at the club table after Harris Covington passed away. He had been a faithful member for many years at the club table from probably all three locations. He was a regular here at the club, at the club table, and uh, he was a grand friend of many of us here in town. And, and uh, I think he was part of the original group that came together to found this club in 1957. And I went back to the president's room a little while ago to look at the different pictures of the former presidents, and I see him very prominently uh, portrayed up there. But he was one of the real soft-spoken and quiet leaders of this club. My father loved this club. It meant an awful lot to him, and he spent an awful lot of time at all three of the places. Uh, he would also, he would also today realize that change is inevitable, and our community has changed. Uh, there's, there's no longer the level of manufacturing that used to be here. Uh, the financial area has changed, the dynamics there. And he would know that 
uh, any any institution in order to survive for all these years would have to change with the times. Uh, I, I think he would rather it be like it was, but he would also realize that it, that it couldn't couldn't really continue to and, and expect to to be what it was today. I think being a member is the being at the intersection of commerce and friendship. Years before the debutante club was just begun and I was one of the first debutantes and so it was really special to have our daughter be a debutante and have all the fun Ex, uh, experiences, meeting new people. I mean, they're off at college, but they're all not at the same college, and they don't have the same friends. I mean, they're, they're new friends. So it was, a, it was a wonderful event, and I think everyone had a, a wonderful time. There was an a Easter egg hunt out in the courtyard, and it was, I think the children had such a good time, and the, the adults did. And then, you know, we've been down here for um, a number of evenings when there was music in the courtyard and and uh, dinner and just you know fun things like that. Easter brunch that they have this year where the Easter Bunny came and the Easter mm -hmm. egg hunt our kids love that. Um, the father son father daughter lunch. Uh, They've had the, the movie night where the adults have dinner and then the kids have a, a movie and I, I guess a babysitter or yeah, someone. Yeah, we had that in the past yeah. when we first joined, mm -hmm. yeah. We love the Thursday night dinners and the, um, I don't know, all the brunches that there are, so it's definitely family friendly. Our kids love coming here. Our, our little one gets excited when he sees oh, the yeah. building. <laughs> so. Usually when we hit the stoplight at uh, Lindsay in English, he's already talking about eating because he knows where we're coming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do remember Dad's 90th birthday. We had a big party here at the String and Splinter Club and uh, we had some music and all and mom and dad did a little dancing uh, on there. They always were good in showing us their moves on the dance floor. Uh, but yeah, we had, you know, uh, multi-generation, not only from dad on down, but our children and some of our children's children. It was a beautiful fall day and it was very cold and very windy and um, there were um, so many people there from out of town and um, I can remember they were uh, they came from Louisville Richmond a lot of you know different big cities and they were very impressed with the string and splinter I think it was a buffet wasn't it uh, I don't remember I don't either I, but I think it was a buffet our wedding reception was lots of fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, we started out on the courtyard with our first dance dance with my dad, toast. I think several other people had what, uh, anniversaries that yeah. day too, so celebrated them. Um, everyone came back inside for a buffet dinner. Um, the entire downstairs was filled with people. All the rooms were filled with um, people eating and upstairs as well. We had over, over 200 people. Yeah, here. we had yeah. the cake cutting inside and champagne toast, and then we went outside. We had a full band um, outside from Raleigh and just fun dancing. We had a great time. I think mm -hmm. the best part was the picnic dinner that the string gave us after <laughs> we left. Someone here put together a full basket dinner. of the full dinner that we had and it was in the car waiting for us and we took it back to the Adams Inn and that's... We got that, to that eat. That was our <laughs> dinner, about 11.30 yeah, that we night. We finally yeah. got to eat, so yeah. It was a great night though. I think of enjoyable. I can't think of being without it <laughs> uh, for so long. I've enjoyed it so much. And so when I think of the string, it's the string. I don't say string and splinter, not often, only to those people that have never been here. It's the string. Warm and elegant, two words. I would uh, go along with that. Elegant is the main adjective when you tell people who are not members that you're going to bring them to the to the string of splinter they're impressed and they just can't wait to get here because they know the elegancy of the club and the food and service and everything goes along with it. 
Oh, what I like to see is the people, their expressions when they um, come out of the bathroom after the beautiful picture in the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, Actually, yeah. that's good. <laughs> good memories of coming here all the way back for 40 plus years and just seeing the people here and seeing the comrades that everybody that knows everybody and you can come in here at, at whether it be at lunch now we have a buffet and you just know the people the food is good and you don't sometimes you don't even have to sign you just leave and everybody knows it because it's your club member and just all through the years the camaraderie is just can't be touched. Uh, the, the hospitality when you walk in that front door and, and you see uh, Pat Patterson of many years ago or Barbara Gary or Karen Duffy and then you come on inside the, 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 the place and, and you uh, are greeted by, by uh, Tracy Quick. Those, those are what make me come back every single day I'm in town. So that's what's so special about this place. I mean, I've had a lot of good memories here. and It just has always been a very welcoming place. I think it's just a wonderful, safe gathering place that's like coming home, but your kitchen's still nice and clean. <laughs> uh, you know, being able to share this place with our kids and, and our friends now, too, you know, it's, it's fun. It's definitely you know. special. Mm -hmm. Memories coming and going and happiness good times with uh, family particularly and bridge club members and other members of the string just good times happy times the string splinter means a lot to me it, it's it's kind of it's kind of home from the basement of the sheraton hotel to market square the String and Splinter has been a refuge for its members for 60 years, and it looks forward to being here for 60 more.